All right, everybody, as always, we're going to go ahead and let everybody uh, kind of get logged in for a few minutes here. And, and as we do that, um, yeah, so, so Jess, be, before we even tell everybody what, you know, we're going to be covering today, what, what are you watching right now? And, and listen, I want everybody who's logging in right now, put into the chat, what is the show that you're watching right now that you're super excited about? Uh, Jessica and I were just talking about a couple. So what, what are, what are you watching right now? Well, I just started watching The Bear last night because the new season is out. But I am also I'm also rewatching Glow for the fourth time. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, Glow on Netflix. Um, I can't remember if you've had a chance to watch that one. I I, I haven't, but I know exactly what it and is. I've been like on you about it <laughs> before. Gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Yes. With um, Mark Marin, who I just think is so funny. And endearing and just absolutely rocks that show. And mm. it's just such a great cast. And I really like just seeing the art and the sport of wrestling, mm. watching them learn the moves. I'm like, I want to do that. I want to <laughs> get thrown. I know I'd land on my face, but it's so much fun. Uh, you, you you being a a, a a a professional wrestler, Jessica, would that would that would just that would be absolutely fantastic. Just, <laughs> I, pe people probably don't realize that you're a, you're not a uh, you're, you're you're not the tallest of people, and so watching you run around a ring would be absolutely fantastic. That's right. That's um, so so uh, I I actually just started watching Lessons in Chemistry, which has just been an absolutely astronomical show. I'm a huge Brie Larson fan. Um, we just I think we finished episode three or four last night, and and I just I love unpredictable shows. Like I have, mm. have no idea what's happening or what's going to happen. You know, I'm I'm not a huge fan of the rote sort of you know well blankety blank play. You know, it's like an A plus B equals C equation. I know some people like that, but that that's not my bag of tricks. All right, so uh, if you guys want to put in what you're watching, thank you, Carrie, for saying that you're rewatching Maniac. Um, you know, if there's anybody else who wants to put in what they're watching, we always love to know because Jessica and I love uh, watching good television. But Jess, what are we going to be talking about today? Yes, well, today we are talking about how to stand out on LinkedIn. If you are here, it's probably because you already know that LinkedIn is an ideal place to connect with clients and prospects. Millions of decision makers are on LinkedIn and people log in with the, a learning mindset. So your, your financial expertise is well received. People are expecting to network and engage with you. But the thing is, there are also many advisors on LinkedIn who have maybe similar goals as you, and we even share the same audience. So how do you set yourself apart? How do you rise above the noise? That is exactly what we will talk about in today's webinar. First, we will go through best practices for writing in 2024. And then we will move into three styles of LinkedIn posts that give advisors a competitive edge we're actually going to do a live review of real posts by advisors to give you prompts that you can use for your own writing. But first. Yeah, so this is me. Uh, so why why should you be listening to, to me here? Well, it, it's probably because Kirk and I have built um, almost our entire business off of LinkedIn, specifically in, in writing very engaging social media content. Um, in, in, in trying to make it so that we really do rise above the noise and, and, and stand in a category of one, even though there are other people who do content marketing, who do podcast production, who do video production, you know, what, what were we going to do to really stand out? Uh, and, and that's really what Jessica and I'm going to talk about today. Now, Jessica, click to the next slide. And before you tell everybody who you are, I have to say something about you. So listen, one of the reasons why Jessica does these with me uh, isn't just because she's absolutely fantastic uh, and she's a really great presenter. It, it's because her social media posts that she writes for Proudmouth have at this point gotten over 100,000 impressions. And that means that the way that she writes and how she writes and what she writes is, is so unbelievably powerful and good for our organization. And in turn, we have taken what happens with her, uh, you know, and, and really tried to distill it in with the team. Um, that's what we're, what we're really looking for. So, all right, Jessica, you can introduce yourself now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure what to add to that, but this is me when I'm, you know, I was five years old. <laughs> this was me on my birthday with our family dog, Spunky. And on the barrette in my hair, those are little balloons. 
Oh, like they're actually wow. little baby balloons. I want those back. <laughs> yes. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, so glad you're here. Great to meet you. I've been with Proudmouth for almost, you know, since the very beginning, mm -hmm. which I'm, I'm very proud of. I have experience writing posts for advisors, and I've shifted into writing content for all of our channels from Proudmouth, Proudmouth's marketing department. And all in all, I've written, oh, I think nearly, nearly 4,000 posts. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to share some of what I've learned. Let me continue. Let's go into best practices for standing out on LinkedIn. Oh gosh, the first <laughs> one, make it human. Oh, AI, <laughs> you know, I don't know how much I need to say about this. AI, it's, it's so well used now. I think most of us have a nose for it where we, we're starting to recognize it on LinkedIn, just the structure of the sentences, the wording. I know my eyes are starting to glaze over when I see the, you know, obvious AI posts and it, I believe it really is becoming novel to just sound like a human being. And that is the best way to connect with people. But here's the thing, even if we're not using chat GPT or some kind of AI, I think there's this phenomenon that happens when we sit at the keyboard where we get a little bit stiff, we get a little bit formal and we, we almost go into this mode where we're writing an essay or we're trying to impress people. We're really, we just want to sound, sound like our authentic selves. And asking this question as you're writing, would I say it this way to a friend could help us shift into that conversational mode and get back into touch with, okay, what do I actually, what do I actually sound like? And would I really say these words? When I say a friend here, it's not a work friend. It's not a colleague. It's not someone who knows the jargon. It's someone whose relationship you value, someone you care about, but someone who's not at the same knowledge base. So if you, if you get a little stuck in your head, like I do sometimes, take this question and take it literally and start actually talking it out. And you can even voice dictate in, into your phone and, and see what you get. This will also get you talking to one person instead of to a crowd or kind of into the abyss. Highly recommend that. And here is an example from one of our clients, Jeremy Hauser, that I thought really embodied writing like a human. Matt, I'd love to hear your impressions on this one. Well, I absolutely, I, the, the human component is, is vitally important. And, and, and also, you know, it's that whole KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. And I think a lot of times we get so involved in, um, in, in trying to sound smart that we actually push people away. And I think this post is a perfect example of, of being very clear, very succinct. I love, I, and maybe, I don't know if this is a generational thing. I still love emojis. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Um, but I love, I, I, I love just, it sounds like Jeremy's talking to us, right? Mm -hmm. Lessons learned from a top advisor. And, and, and I know that you're going to talk about this a little bit too, but, but it's not even grammatically perfect, because it's conversational. So what, why don't you, I love your insight on, on this too. Yes, I, I love the emojis as well, because it just adds a pop of fun and lets me know as the reader, what can I expect if I ever want to talk to Jeremy? Oh, he's, he's kind of a fun person, probably yeah. a really fun person. And I like that it's not grammatically correct because it sounds like we're in the midst of conversation when he's saying, had an opportunity to check out. You know, it's not I had, it's had an opportunity to check out. That's how people talk. Yeah. Don't allow yourself to talk how people talk. Yeah. And with that, yes, be flexible with grammar. Uh, my favorite thing to do is to pop in a sentence fragment. You know, have have a one word sentence. Why not? It's your post. You could have, you know, just one word, why, and then answer the question. And this adds a little bit of interest to your post as well. Mm -hmm. And just remember, you're you're not being marked you're not being graded. The focus is on connecting with people. Yeah. So let go with some of that. Okay. Next up is here is mixing up your sentence lengths. I had some fun 
with one of Matt's posts, his mm-hmm. post on the right, he's telling a story about one of the first guests that we had on our podcast. I put it into chat GPT and I asked it to make it generic and robotic. And it gave me a post that's entirely long sentences. And I thought, wow, that really changes the tone and the pacing of the post, that long sentence, long sentence. It slows it down and it gives it this sort of droning oh, yeah. effect, you know? And, you know, Matt Halloran does not drone when he tells <laughs> a story, you know? You would hope that most people wouldn't tell a story like this. Usually there's parts that are faster and slower. So use a variety of sentence lengths to get the pacing. On And yeah, because on the other hand, if you have all you know short sentences it's choppy it's yep. fast and that might not be the effect you want either another good way to test if your sentences are long is if it's kind of a slog for you to get through and that takes mm-hmm. you know being honest honest about your own work but it is a good test to go through you know jessica when you when you built this slide <clears throat> when we were going through this, I had, I had immediately said, did you put the one on the left and through chat GPT? And you're like, I did. And you can even, cause it just doesn't sound like a human. Her dedication was commendable yet undoubtedly. I mean, really who, nobody talks like that. Um, so, and I also love, I love the, the flow and in the interruption of the flow. And, and, and that's what you did on the right hand side here. You know, why? So a little bit of a sentence, I'm drawing you in and then I'm hitting you with something that's kind of staccato. And then I'm coming back to, you know, elaborate on that. One of the things that I learned from a a mutual friend of ours, Derek Pollard, that I really, really love is reading it out loud, right? And so, so when you're writing something before you post it, read it out loud and see if it sounds like you, um, and, and if it doesn't, then you've got work to do. Uh, and don't don't post something. And I have say this a lot. Don't post something half ass. You got a whole ass content. So, yeah, I love that you brought up Derek's advice with reading it, reading out out loud, because that's a good way. Your ear will catch things. It'll catch yep. errors, or if the pacing is off with the mm-hmm. all long sentences, all short sentences. Yeah. Yes, that is a great thing to do. Okay, our next best practice is make it inviting. I like to say that our content isn't anyone's required reading. No one has to read. No one has to read your posts um, unless you're paying them to edit it. (laughs) You know, in in grade five, we were assigned to read The Wind in the Willows, and I I still didn't read it. So, you know, (laughs) even even then, um, people have to want to read your post. And what often happens on social media is people will expand your post, they'll do a quick scroll, and they'll make a quick decision based on what they see, but whether they're going to invest the time in it. Is it a big block of overwhelming text? Or is it broken down with maybe some bullet points and white space? Let's get into that a little bit more. Yeah. Make it skimmable. Um, one to three sentences per paragraph. A good guide with paragraphs is to, when you're shifting, presenting a new idea, start a new paragraph. But with copywriting, you can even be more liberal with that, like on the previous slide where we saw why, just standing on its own. If you want to bring emphasis and attention to one sentence, make it its own paragraph. Um, But don't go too too far the other way. Remember the broetry? I was like one sentence, one sentence, one (laughs) sentence (laughs) that, that I find, you know, we rely on paragraphs to help us make connections. So when they don't exist, I think it takes a little bit more work to make those connections. Matt, is there anything you'd like to add to this? I like the white space idea, right? I don't think people understand the power of spacing on a page. Um, Mm -hmm. And in, you can force reflection and pause, you know, without having to say 
hey, uh, take a pause, right? I mean, it just, it forces you. Um, and you can also really create um, something that's very visually appealing too uh, with using space and spacing, um, which I, I might be a little bit more advanced, but but this is about how to stand out, everybody, right? Yeah. So if you're always just, you know, everything's left justified and everything is just blah, 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 right? If you can mix that stuff up, people can be like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Uh, and, and I just want that second. That's all we want, Jessica. We just want that second. And when we get it, then we've gotten the person's attention and then hopefully we can communicate our message. Exactly. Let's check out an example from one of our clients, Josh Leonard. I like the use of white space here. Mm -hmm. I like the sh something about the shape of this mm -hmm. is really inviting. Matt, you were saying something really great to me yesterday about where the eye lands. Well, and actually, let's engage people on this. So when you look at this post, everybody, what is the first word that jumps out at you? So so for me, it's ready, right? For some reason, my eye immediately went to what is that, the fourth sentence there? And because, oh, I'm ready, <laughs> right? Uh, and so, and, and, but your word went, your mind went, or your eye went to a different word. What, what did yours do? Mine went to a behavioral bias, mm -hmm. maybe the culprit. Did anyone else land there? Yeah, uh, put 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 your put your responses in chat because oh we got a couple of people who are oh we got some hand raises good 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 um, yeah so hold on what just happened with the thing here just give me a second for some yeah. reason I'm seeing everybody raising their hands but nobody's putting chats in the chatty thing so yeah put put your answers in the chatty thing yeah. uh, that that would that would be fantastic so. Yeah, I think my eye landed there, maybe because it's the exclamation point. It's the shortest sentence I mm. see. But I think this shows that our eyes are going to land on, on different parts, and we may not oh. read a post linearly. So it's good to format it in a way that things are are popping out. So this is interesting. So we just got a, a David and Allison just uh... – Mark said, ready to break free. Allison said she also saw the behavioral bias first. Uh -huh. And David, this is interesting, wondered where to start. The first sentence looks like a warm up. And then I went to the picture. So, and Bell says, uh, anchoring bias. So yeah, it, ooh, mm -hmm. anchoring bias. That's, that's freaking cool. So, that's so here's nice. the fun part. And one of the reasons why we wanted to engage all of you, one, is so that you're not going to fall asleep. This is right after lunch. Uh, but, but two uh, is because this is really good information for you all to take a time to look at where your eyes go. So when you write posts after you read it aloud and you sit with it for a second, go back and look at it. And just from a visual perspective, see where your eyes go. Um, and that's going to, that could, wait, you might want to reformat the entire, you know, uh, you know, piece of social media content that you're writing on LinkedIn. Because again, our job here on this webinar is to get you to start writing in a way that's going to get attention. Um, and Jess, we've got some other really great examples. So let's, let's keep rolling yes, here. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. The third best writing practice is make it zero click, zero click content. It's a term coined by Amanda Natividad from Spark Toro. And if, if you haven't heard of this yet, it refers to content that keeps you on the platform itself instead of sending you somewhere else through a link. In the context of LinkedIn, this could be a, a text only post, maybe it's a story. It could be a post with a natively uploaded video clip that you're gonna play and watch right there on LinkedIn. Or it could be a post that includes a link, but the link is additive. And I'll explain. It could be a link for a podcast episode. Here are three ways to save um, for your emergency fund. And the post is going to share one of the tips with you. And then it's going to say to get, you know, tips two and three, go listen to the full episode. So there will be a link in that post, but people can gain insights from the post itself without having to go somewhere else. And Matt, this is just the way things are going. We see it on Google. You could type in a question and the Google results page will you know, show you a snapshot of an answer from you know, one of the listings. And zero click content is of course 
what social media platforms like LinkedIn prefer is they want to keep you. <laughs> they want to keep you on the platform. And then at the same time, people want to stay on the platform, don't they? Like if, if people are scrolling, they want to keep doing what they're doing. There's a little more friction. It's a little harder to get people to go somewhere else. What is your take on this, Matt? Well, now LinkedIn uh, uh, pulled back from this, but what they were doing a little while ago was if there was an external link, uh, LinkedIn actually had a warning that came up that said, you are about to leave LinkedIn and go to an outside site. Do you want to do that? And I'm like, that's a really jerk move, man. Uh, and they ended up stopping that. But I have a feeling that they were testing it to see what ended up happening uh, and how many people were clicking off, mm. uh, you know, uh, off. So that that's something that we just all need to be prepared for, which is why zero click content is, is so vitally important. By the way, I, I put a link in the chat to that zero click article by Amanda. Ooh, um, awesome. And so I just, I just put that in the chat. So you guys can click on that link if you'd like. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Oh yeah. And I was just going to say, this really is the way to succeed on mm -hmm. LinkedIn in 2024 and, and beyond. And it's beneficial to you as the advisor as well, because even if people don't click on that link right now um, or, or later, they're still learning from yeah. you. So you're still able to build a relationship with people on their terms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah. Quick example. This is from Matt's recent appearance on a podcast. And what we did is we put some, you know, some spicy, <laughs> some spicy takes in this list here and asked our audience, what do you, are they spicy? You tell us. Mm -hmm. So we're able to get some attention with these, you know, these takes and potentially, you know, spark discussion, even if people don't listen to the episode. And I think it also helps drive interest to the episode as well. Okay. And this kind of links very closely <laughs> to our first style of LinkedIn post for giving you a competitive advantage, which is called a spiky POV or point of view. Um, this is a term by Wes Cow, co-founder of Maven. And it's all about showcasing your uniqueness. This is great for advisors. It helps set you apart because it's all about highlighting the unique way that you approach your work. Nobody can imitate this. And it shows how much you know about your niche and how passionate you are about serving them. Let's get into the qualities here. A spiky POV, it's something that lights you up. You feel fiery about it. And you might even feel a little bit frustrated about it because it's often something that you wish more people in your niche knew about because their lives would be better or they would be, you know, saved from having some issues if only they knew. And then it is something that's shaped by your work and your experience. It's not, it's not just like an opinion, <laughs> you know, you've pulled out of the air because of your experience working with clients, you've been able to come to this thesis, the spiky POV. And our third one here, it's debatable. People, other professionals might not agree with it. Um, if everyone does agree with it, it's not, it's not spiky. It's right. a sm smooth. I don't know. It's, it's a smooth POV. <laughs> and at the same time, the point of this isn't to stir the pot or be a contrarian. Um, and most advisors, I know they don't want to do that anyway, but that could be a little bit of a a byproduct <laughs> because yeah. it is spiky and that is that is okay um and we'll get to the compliance part after this the fourth quality is that a spiky pov gives your audience um something meaningful it teaches them something they don't already know and if this is a word it makes you followable on linkedin people want to follow people who are confident and have you know have opinions to share with them there's an exchange going on there and if anyone here is looking to be a guest on podcasts, a spiky POV is, is a good thing to have. Like I know as, as the producer of our podcast, that's something that I'm, I'm looking for all the time. Mm -hmm. Matt, can you talk about this from a compliance perspective? Yeah. 
because <laughs> I'm sure that there are people who are doing a little bit of twitching uh, because of this, right? So, um, so I, I love Jessica how you just said this isn't meant to be wildly controversial. You're you're not going to be, uh, you know, screaming and yelling and getting you know wildly inappropriate. That especially not on LinkedIn. So that's not what LinkedIn is for. So so I, I really liken this to something that my grandmother said to me, which is you don't talk about sex, you don't talk about money, you don't talk about money, or you don't talk about religion. Um, you know, and and, and guys, you're already talking about money. So, you know, you're kind of breaking some of the rules. So, you know, don't talk about politics. Don't talk about religion, especially in a controversial way. Uh, right. That's it, just not not that's not what and by the way, the algorithm does not like that. LinkedIn's algorithm does not like that. Um, and in fact, especially if you get people who are blocking you or reporting your post, that that bodes very, very poorly. Now, other social media platforms are very different, but we're specifically focused on LinkedIn right now. So. All right, we've got examples, don't we? Yes, a quick one from Dan Haylett. He hosts Humans versus Retirement podcast. He's also a member of our academy. And I pulled this from his podcast description. The thesis here is that humans are not wired for our retirement. So that, you know, that's an that's a thesis he's arrived at from his experience working with clients. It's something I'm sure he wishes more people were aware of because he started a podcast about it. And he's clearly, clearly passionate about it. That is palpable when we read his posts and hear his podcast. Mm -hmm. And okay, let's do a live review of an actual post written by an advisor. I'm just going to minimize my screen and pull up this LinkedIn post. Matt, you can see this, right? Oh, uh, yeah. And I actually just put a link to that okay. post in chat. Okay. It always feels funny making a move, <laughs> making mm -hmm. a move like this, but okay. I'll just give you give you all a moment to just have a look at this post. So when we think about the best practices that we talked about earlier, what do you notice? Make it human, formatting, zero click content. Just let us know in the chat what's what's jumping out at you. Well, I'm going to jump in right away. Yeah. The opening line is fantastic, uh, right? Uh, you know, uh, I disagree with Dave Ramsey. So so David specifically said here in the chat, gets people's attention even if they do or don't agree. And it's so funny that he says that because when we were, ro we were dry running this, um, one of the things that I had said was, listen, you're going to read this if you love Dave Ramsey or if you don't love Dave Ramsey. And, you know, that's pretty much 100% of the population. I mean, if some people, if they don't know who Dave Ramsey is, I'm still going to want to read it because uh, I don't know who Dave Ramsey is. Um, so we've also got, so Jackie said um, mm -hmm. they like the emoticons and the short sentences. I love that. And yeah. um, <laughs> David says, makes me want to talk to her and find out why. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. There's a huge curiosity curiosity gap here that we want to fill. It's like, hey, hey, what is going on? Um, yeah, I really like starting with the short sentence and sort of easing people in. Something I noticed here in the list, she really, she really leans into this. I mean, she gives Dave Ramsey credit, you know, but that there's just some things she does not agree with. Okay. But then she gets into this list. Dave's crappy credit card. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Oh my gosh. You know, it's yeah. kind of funny. And Christine is funny. Yeah. Like if you've talked to her, well, you have Matt, she's funny. So I can tell you for sure that this sounds like her. So, so, uh, okay. I just wrote in there. You, listen, if there, you guys have a spiky POV, share it in the chat and explain why, but just ro scroll down here because yeah. th there's something of, there's a couple of things about this. That's really fantastic. Number one is there's a link there that doesn't look like a normal link. But what I love here is this grab your AirPods or headphones and listen to this juice episode. Just a fantastic call to action. Um, I absolutely love that. Uh, it's I think it's just so unbelievable how I, in the Dave Ramsey picture. I mean, there's this is firing on all cylinders. Now, I want to tell everybody that I reached out to Christine because I wanted to find out because if you scroll down again, you can see um, that she has 
87 people, 97 comments, six reposts. And I was hoping that Christine would actually tell me what her impressions were, but I think she's actually on vacation, which is why I, I wasn't able to get back with her. But guys, that's so much traffic, 80 plus, 87 people reacted to this. This is the sort of stuff that that's absolutely gold. Yes. That really, I have the chat open too. I really love the comments. Jackie, free advice is not free. You just don't know what it costs you yet. Yeah. And then from David, top reasons you should not use my services. Yeah. Disqualifying people. Mm -hmm. I love that. Before we move on, I just want to give some ideas that you all could use to write your own post. Just drawing from this. Christine, notice she does not bury the lead. Mm -hmm. She starts... I disagree. You know, I disagree with Dave Ramsey. She is um, talking about a specific persona, but um, you don't have to do that. You know, she could have said, I disagree with the gazelle intensity approach. It's a really, you know, unsustainable way to get out yep. of debt. So you can, if there's a person, you can include the person or you can skip to the person and just go to, you know, the advice. Mm -hmm. So again, you can start with the lead I disagree with, or I'm tired of. I'm I'm tired of, be yeah. of people being told to do the gazelle intensity. I'm tired of people being told. And that's passive voice. And people say, oh, it's not as powerful. Sure it is. It's, it's softer. Because <laughs> the other thing, the other alternative is I'm tired of advisors saying this. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, you, you could go there. But that yeah. is, that's another spice level. Okay. So start with the lead. That's one idea. The second idea is you could ease into it a little bit. If this, well, I, I recommend talking about your spicy POV or spiky one multiple times. So, mm -hmm. so you could have multiple ways of going about it. So you could start off with a little bit of background, like, you know, how you got to where you are. I'm just making this up. Christine could say, I was a student of Dave Ramsey 15 mm -hmm. years ago, and then I had an experience that changed my mind and then bam, yep. you go into your spiky POV. Okay, let us keep going. Okay, this is all you, Matt, stories. All right, well, so we believe in something called the perfect content formula. And the perfect content formula is storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. And in any time you're writing a post, you really want to have those four components uh, in each of them. And storytelling is at the beginning for a reason, um, not just because it rolls off the tongue even easier. It's really because since the dawn of time, we've been sitting around cooking food on fires and having conversations. Um, but more importantly, it needs to be your story. So when when we, um, when my wife and I worked at a place called Boys Town, uh, there was, we had this thing, it was called a four to one rule. So for every piece of negative uh, feedback that you would give, you had to do four pieces of positive feedback. We were working with kids. And so we knew that there had to be that level of balance. Um, and then when they actually started really misbehaving, then it would it flipped to 10 to one. So we would have to find 10 things to praise them before we did another correction. And we've really implemented this four to one rule here at Proudmouth. So when our team writes for Kirk, myself, or our Proudmouth page, we're always looking for ways to sprinkle a little bit of our personal story in there. And this is a great example of this. In fact, I'm, I'm going to put it in chat too. So that you can look at um, at more and more stuff here. So this is about my 25th wedding anniversary uh, that that was um, last week, and um, you know, I, I there's a couple of things I love about how this was written. Is the first one is I, if you want to see more, you're going to click there and then you're going to expand the post. But th this was a like a top 10 list or, you know, a top list of the things that I've learned uh, from being married to my wife. And what, you know, now we're, we're, we're over 6,000 impressions, 150, uh, you know, people liking it. Uh, what is that? 90, 80 comments? I can't see how many that is. 50. 50. Thank you. 50 comments. And the interesting thing was, is in this post, there were spiky POVs. 
right? And, and one of them was actually number nine. Uh, and number nine was that you don't have to go to bed with this person every single solitary night. You don't even have to sleep in the same bed as the same person all the time, right? And so, and I had people who were like, oh my God, thank you for saying that out loud. Um, now, is that really spiky? Am I going to piss people off? Well, I, thankfully I didn't. Um, but it definitely got a lot more engagement and more passion because, you know, in, in in social media, I think the thing that so many people are really missing is social, right? It, it You can't just talk at people. You have to talk with people. And in, in, in to, to borrow from a, a good friend of ours, it shows that you're listening. And if you can actually show you're listening on social media, everything ends up changing. So, um, yeah, the, I think this is such a, first off, it's wildly self-serving. I really want all of you to look at this post because one, it was written so incredibly well Two, it got way more traction than the majority of posts. Because like, if I post something about the webinar, we maybe get 500, 700 impressions. You know, we're 10 times that, uh, with this just by being personal. And yes, I was very, very young and I have had a beard since I, I got out of the Navy. Just so everybody knows, uh, that's actually, uh, I have, I've only shaved my beard once, uh, since I've known my wife and she told me never to do it again. <laughs> so when you're, People don't give a crap about what you know. Uh, they don't. They don't care about your feelings on four hundred one ks. They don't care about your feelings on annuities or cash value life insurance until they feel like you actually have something that's a connection point with them. And there's a wonderful book that we refer to all the time. Uh, and and I man, I should be getting a commission because this guy gets more book sales for me than probably anybody. But there's an amazing book called The Seven Principles of Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. And one of the things that he talks about in them is is are you like me and do I like you? And am I like your other clients? Those three likes are so vitally important, especially when it comes to telling your story so that people can connect with you. And, and going back to David's point, top reasons why you should not use my service, he's going as an opposition. I think it's fantastic to be able to make sure that you're being abundantly clear. Like for instance, we here at Problem we don't really work with anybody outside of independent financial services professionals. That's it. We don't, right? We have a couple of people who provide services to financial advisors, and we got a couple of outliers out of the hundred some clients that we have. But our bread and butter and who we market to is, uh, you know, um, f you know, financial service, independent, generally RIA people is who we really want to work with. And then last but not least, if somebody shares your value, the probability of you wanting to hang out with them is exponentially greater. Uh, and because of that, that's where a relationship is able to begin. And it's just, just to be really, really clear, with our podcast and with LinkedIn, Kirk and I and the team have really built this very, very large, very successful company because we follow all of the things that Jessica and I are talking about today. What do you got to add to that? I think we'll jump into the live review. Yay! I'm so eager. I'm so eager to get to this one. Okay. All right. I'm putting it in the chat. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Okay. Just okay. give everyone a second to orient to this post. Uh, so, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to answer Jackie's question as, as people are reading this. So it's storytelling, education, entertainment, call to action. And I'll type that in there in just a minute. So you have it. Um, oh my gosh. So first off, Ben Galloway is a magnificent human being and, and just an unbelievable financial services professional, but what a perfect story that doesn't tell you too much, right? So that's one of the things I hear, you know, uh, prospects and clients and advisors say to me all the time is, Matt, I don't want to overshare. And I believe this post is the perfect example of sharing just the right amount of information so that you understand a little bit more about who Ben is while still feeling a very strong connection. So Jess, there were some things about this that you really liked too. Yes. Um, well, I know one of the elements of a good story is conflict. And what I've noticed, I guess, right away is how Ben starts with this great first line about social anxiety almost got in the way of an incredible connection. So again, opening up that like curiosity factor, 
we we know it didn't get in the way, but we know it almost did. So I still want to know, well, how did it almost? How did it almost get in the way? That was the first thing. And I'd love to hear your impressions too in the chat. Something else, Matt, was it so conversational? Mm -hmm. Attended a grad party. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, woman sitting next to us would have been easier. We don't have the I, I, I there, mm -hmm. but it's fine. It's conversational. It flows. It works. What do you think? Yeah. So I just put a, well, your question in there. So, so one of the other reasons why we wanted to use this post as an example is because it is a sales post that doesn't feel or look like a sales post. Right. right. And so uh, this is one of the best things that you can do. Um, you know, she had a ton of questions about managing and inheritance. Oh my God. Right. Uh, so he's planting these wonderful seeds throughout this post. You get to know who he is that, you know, you get to understand what they were talking about, you know, in all, all of the sudden. And again, it's totally zero click content, zero click content. Um, it, you know, Carrie says, I love the vulnerability of this post. And you're mm -hmm. right, Carrie, this is, this is, it's perfect. And, and this is what changes your social media platform. And in your interaction on your posts is, again, it's just opening that hood just enough so people can see what's in there without, you know, go, you know, just opening up the hood and, you know, telling everybody about all of the working parts of your engine. No, nobody wants to know that. That is an offline conversation. But this is such a beautiful way to just make people feel really comfortable. So, um, so Jack, so I asked the question, tell us a story about how you met one of your clients. What did you have to overcome or what did you, uh, what did your client have to overcome? And, and Jackie just answered, I'm not going to read that, but here's the deal. That Jackie is a social media post. That's a brilliant social media post. Um, and I just can't stress enough that that right there. And if you had a picture, uh, you know, with your fiance or, you know, you know, buying wedding stuff or anything, I mean, that just, that's like a perfect post and that people are going to feel like they know you even better, even if they weren't at your wedding, which probably they weren't. Um, but that just draws people in. And that's really what we're looking for. Remember the whole foundation of this presentation today is for you to understand what you need to do to write more successfully on LinkedIn to get more attention, get more clicks, and hopefully get people to become part of your owned audience. Excellent. I think I'll jump to the next yep. example here, which is another story. Uh, oh, Matt, can you put it in the chat? Done. For us? Oh, awesome. Thank you. I'm going to scroll down a little bit for anyone who's watching my screen. We have a post by Lumina. Here is a photo of her and her two children when they're younger. And then I'm just going to scroll. Oh, and um, her little boy is holding it, a dollar bill. That's mm. important. I'm going to scroll up here. So when we think about the best practices, writing like a human, formatting, zero click, what do we think of this post? So it's interesting that we used this one for a couple of reasons. One, because we were talking about long sentences and big paragraphs, mm -hmm. but she works you into it. I know she does. Right. She eases you in and okay. Okay. I like the first sentence. Whoa. I like the second sentence. Oh my God. The, the, you know, I'm pretty sure I bribed him to join the photo. And one of the many wonderful things money can buy bam. Now, man, you got me fish hook me in. Like I'm in, I'm ready to go. I I'm, I bought in with those first four cents. Now, personally, I would have actually put a space in between hand and I'm pretty sure just because I would personally have wanted that broken up a little bit more right. from a visual perspective. But, um, other than that, I, I just think it's absolutely delightful. Oh, me too. And I, I'm thinking about these first sentences. There's something unusual here compared to what I see on LinkedIn anyway, is it's so self-referential. It made me laugh to look closely at this photo. Mm -hmm. Usually, I don't know, usually we don't talk, really talk about the photo. It's just kind of there <laughs> and we contextualize it. But I love that that's how she gets into the post mm -hmm. and engages you with the photo. Something that stands out to me here is, well, I mean, many things. When I think about, would I say it this way to a friend? I read this post and it's just so honest. Matt, you used, you said that the other day um, about financial stress and mm -hmm. strain and living paycheck to paycheck. 
as a young parent, it's so honest that I can imagine having this conversation with Lumina over coffee. She's she's talking with me. She's not talking at me. And then notice all of the use of I. I yeah. think, I wish, there's several I wish. I'm still smiling. I don't think there's any you. And we hear a lot of advice in marketing that really should be nuanced is to never talk about yourself. Always talk to the audience. You, you, you. Well, you know, Lumina, she's talking about herself, but in a way that is with us yeah. and that breaks down barriers. I think that's my strongest impression of yeah. this post. All right. We got 15 minutes left, sister. We, we've got to get rolling. Got to keep going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's jump back in here. Okay, Matt, okay. the free resource. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so everybody, I just put a link in chat. So please, please, please click on this. It's totally freaking free. Um, please, please go to that link um, and, and download this. So one of the things that we have found is one of the struggles that a lot of financial services professionals and advisors really face is they, they don't plan ahead. And so it's Tuesday and they've got a post and then they scramble. So what they do is they grab a bunch of crap uh, and then they just post the crap. Right. So if you use this resource, it's it's 30, it's a way to organize 30 ideas and you can post and post, you know, can continue to build this thing, but you can start seeing how things build on each other. So if you look on the left hand side here, right, uh, you know, family traditions, team traditions, right? So if you if you give yourself a chance to visualize what you're going to be posting, then you can start having your posts have more continuity, which we know in the world of marketing, especially from funnel systems, that if I start here and I know I want to have you end up here, the only way I'm ever going to get you over here is if there's a plan in place. And we just think this spreadsheet is the easiest way for you to begin this journey of being more organized so that you're not being reactionary. Because if you are, the content's just not going to be as good. Right. Okay. Awesome. Let's keep going. Matt, when you have a second, can you put the prompt in from Lumina's post? It was like, find a photo yes. that motivates the work you do. That can yes. help everyone write a similar post. I'm going to go into style three. We won't spend too much time talking about this. We're going to jump into the example pretty quickly. This is called the invitation. And it's all about drawing people to take that next step over to your long form content, your blog, your podcast, your video, but in a way that's zero click content still. And the reason I put this post in this webinar is because advisors will stand out really just by having long form content because they're showing that they're dedicated to showing up consistently to educate their audience. So I think it is, yeah, let's just go to the example here. Just put it in chat. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay. So there is a video with this one. This is by Frank LaRosa. So the major call to action is to watch the full episode. You can play the video. And this episode is about coordinating a day where your team members can create their vision boards. And this podcast, I didn't realize it at first, but this podcast is actually written to advisors as the audience, but that's actually perfect because you could all mm -hmm. let us know if this does resonate with you. What I want to do is play, I'm just going to play the clip. And what I want you to do is listen to how Frank talks and that compared, probably leading you a bit, <laughs> compared to the writing here. Okay, let's play. Even if you're just a single producer with one assistant, you should know what he or she aspires to be and have, because you then have to create a vision of your organization, one person, but it's still organization, uh, an organization that you have your vision, but their vision needs to be able to fit inside of your vision. Otherwise, you're not going to get buy-in. They have to understand that their vision needs to be able to fit into your vision or else you're not going to get buy-in. That's okay. the, why should I care? 
right? Go yeah. So, so I, I, I have to jump in here and I, I'm going to use a small disclosure and disclaimer here. I love Frank. Uh, I think he posts really, really great stuff. I think he's a very, very, very good coach. But my thing is, is what Jessica just played does not have the same feeling as the text. So I'm going to, I'm going to be the mean one here and say that I really do think that this was actually generated by AI and did not actually go back in to fix it. They didn't fix it. So, yeah. Oh, Jessica said her screen is freezing oh. a bit. Um, but, 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 uh, so, so yeah, so, so you, you have a video clip that is, is, is Frank feels like Frank. And then you read the text and it's just, uh, just off enough where you're like, nah, okay. Yeah. I just, I don't feel, I don't feel as comfortable with that. So, so listen, so in the chat, everybody, what, what, what do you, okay. Um, Oh, wow. Sh Shanna just has a hell of a statement here. Everything spit out from AI, unfortunately, includes the same words. Yes. And so one of the things, Shanna, about this is, is LinkedIn knows this, right? Uh, in, in fact, there have been great webinars, by the way, who've been really deconstructing, you know, LinkedIn using AI. But and there's a way to get around this. Uh, and it's actually when you type in a prompt through GPT, you write no yapping, uh, which really takes a lot of those crappy filler words out. It works really well, by the way, uh, but it's still not going to really give you the humanness that you uh, that you need. So, by the way, I mean, I cannot tell you enough. Uh, I, I do a lot of prompt engineering for stuff uh, for, for the company, for my ideation. And no yapping has saved me from reading a whole bunch of crap. Um, yeah. All right. So let's, let's keep rolling here. Uh, Dave, um, what are your thoughts on word count length of content or read time? Jessica, do you have, do you have feelings on that? <laughs> so many. I think, I believe the content should be as long as it needs to be. And I know that's a matter of preference. Um, is, is the content long enough that it's doing its job? that it's sharing enough detail that someone is getting value out of the post and that they're going to want to listen to the episode. In this case, I don't think this post needed to be this long, or I think it could have at least used this space differently. I would love to see Frank's words right up in the post because yeah. that's how that's how great they are. Yeah. Yeah. I hope that helps. All right, Matt. Should we keep rolling? Yeah, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think it is all you now. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm going to put another link in here. Um, listen, what what I want everybody to understand here is, um, we really want to be able to provide all of you with as much education as we possibly can. Um, and this is what we built the Pod Rocket Influence Academy for. It's not all podcasting, just to be abundantly clear. This is an opportunity for all of you to understand the world of content, long form and short form marketing. We have courses on video, all of that sort of stuff. So please go ahead and click on that link. It is a uh, it all it's it's only two hundred dollars a month, but 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 what you get is is pretty freaking insane, in my opinion. Um, I was just talking to somebody, Jessica, this morning uh, about, um, you know, what I used to charge as a consultant because I was actually talking to a fellow coach friend of mine. And, you know, I used to charge anywhere from $350 to $400 an hour for my coaching. Uh, and, and in the academy, you get eight hours of live coaching per month. Jessica does those. I do those. Um, yeah, th that's that's what we have built here. And as we wrap up today, there's one other thing that I want to talk about, and there's no slide for this. So, so we're just going to leave this here. So hopefully all of you click on it and buy it. Cause that'd be really great. Um, but, but the ultimate goal here is we put prompts in the chat. Jessica wrote these great things. Like the last one was find a photo that motivates you, that motivates the work that you do. What was going on in your life at the time? How is your life different now? And what do you wish you knew then that you know now? So I want everybody to go into the chat and copy that prompt that she wrote 
And I want you to use that for one of your next social media posts because it is a perfect format that's going to allow people to get to know you, feel comfortable. And also, you know, and so the photos that Jessica used, you know, with, you know, for, for, for the post with me and my wife, um, and then the, the, even the photos that we used at the beginning of the presentation, those are for a specific reason. I want you to realize, so the picture that, that Jessica used with me, that's me and my big brother, right? And we were, I was being a holy terror and the simple fact that, you know, I stood still long enough to take a picture. Um, but those are the sorts of things, that's what you need um, to to feel your social media posts need to have a feeling they need to draw people in. So many of you are just talking at everybody and the Lumina one too, or Lumina is such a perfect example. And, and Dan, that's why it's interesting. You asked that question about the word count because hers was long, but she drew us into wanting to know more without just like vomiting all of this information on her audience. She slowly brought you in using engaging words that made you want to read the rest. Um, and then of course, then you get to the picture and it all makes sense. And so, uh, so many of you, and, and again, I, I'm going to be saying this until I die. So many of you just half-ass your content. You can't do that anymore because if you're going to take advantage of the great wealth transfer, which honestly is the largest transfer of wealth that's has ever happened in human history. And over the next 15 years, it's about $74 trillion. You have to have a strong content marketing strategy because if you do have a strong content marketing strategy, you're going to get the attention of the heirs. If you do not have a strong content marketing strategy and you're only producing stuff that's written by other people, it doesn't sound like you, there's no personality, guess what? It's not going to show up on social. Nobody's going to see it and you're going to lose out on the largest opportunity in financial services ever in the history of financial services. But if you don't exist in this environment using video, using audio, creating a podcast, doing short videos, writing engaging posts, sharing pictures, and of course, sharing who you are. If you do those seven things, everything will change for you. So Jess, do you have any uh, closing statements before we let everybody go? I don't, but I'm just so glad for everyone's time and all, all of the discussion in the chat. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll give you four minutes back in your day. If you want to know more, please uh, reach out to either Jessica or myself. Uh, and uh, if you have not followed us on social, please make sure that you follow us on social and please click on this link or take a picture of this and join our academy. We'd love to have you because we're trying to build a community of people just like you. So thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye, everybody. Thank you.